Hi everybody. Today I'm gonna speak on a very uh, important video uh, on an important topic. And uh, this video I'm making because many have asked me to make this video and explain to you. I'm trying. I will try to uh, keep it as short as possible. And the topic that I'm gonna discuss is on uh, the rapture. And uh, uh, I have, there are a couple of videos on rapture that I have done, uh, end times, uh, theology, eschatology that I have done. So you can check those videos out uh, on my YouTube channel. Uh, they are very, very informative. But this uh, teaching is, or this uh, video specifically is on 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 to 18 because many many people take this scripture and say look here is a uh, rapture mentioned in the bible and uh, this is what it is talking about rapture so uh, today i'm going to explain 1 thessalonians chapter 4 verse uh, 13 to 18 and we go, we we really going to see whether it is really talking about rapture. So let me just share my screen with you guys. So uh, here it is. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 13 verse 18. And uh, as you can read, let me read this scripture. With you. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed, want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left, until the coming of the Lord will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, uh, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we'll, we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Okay, so many rapture believers uh, take the scripture and uh, this is how they explain. They say that this uh, there will be an event called as rapture. And uh, Jesus will come in the clouds and all the believers will be uh, kind of uh, uh, caught up or they will float in the air or they will be abducted so, and they will just disappear uh, on earth and they will be caught up in this cloud uh, with Jesus and uh, uh, this will happen uh, archangel will have a voice sounded a trumpet sounded and when this happens all of these believers will be caught up and, uh, you know, uh, this is a traditional rapture belief. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, many uh, then argue about this rapture is going to be before the tribulation period. Some people say it is going to be mid-tribulation period. Some people say it's going to be after the tribulation period. So whatever it is, we got to first understand now uh, what is this uh, St. Paul talking about to the, th to the Thessalonians? So before we really understand what is the scripture all about, we need to first and foremost uh, understand the whole context of Thessalonians, what is really happening. And then we will be able to understand this uh, scripture in the in light with the context okay so context is the key many people take one scripture and make a doctrine out of it uh, this whole rapture mindset this whole my uh, rapture uh, doctrine was not uh, 
uh, not there. Uh, it was just it just came 500 years ago. Christian history is around 1,500 years. Rapture doctrine came just 500 years ago, and before that, people used to never look at the scripture as a rapture scripture. Please note that. So uh, let's let's try to understand what is happening. So before we really get into uh, into knowing what is happening, we have to understand uh, Matthew chapter 24. What is really happening in Matthew chapter 24? Uh, because when it comes to end times prophecy, many, many people take this scripture from Matthew chapter 24. So let me show you what is Matthew chapter 24 talking about. And uh, then we move on to this particular uh, scripture of 1 Thessalonians. So let's look at Matthew chapter 24. I'll share the screen to you. So look at this, Matthew chapter 24. This is end, Jesus prophesying the future. And it says, Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to its building. Do you see all these things, he asked. Truly, I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown away. So, here Jesus is looking at the temple and saying, this temple is going to be destroyed. Not one stone is going to be over each other. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, now the disciples came to him privately. Tell, tell us, they said, when will this happen? What are they asking? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of age? So three questions, three questions. But these three questions are actually uh, one question divided into three. So first is Jesus is saying the temple is going to be destroyed. Now, if Jesus has said that, the disciples are asking Jesus, when will this temple get destroyed? And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? So, uh, first question, when will this happen? They're talking about the temple. Now, what will be the sign of your coming? Uh, I want you to understand what does the word coming means. And I'm going to explain to you in detail what does the word coming means. And end of the age the age it's not talking about uh it's it's talking about end of that particular age not talking about end of the world remember it's talking about end of the age what age which age the temple period so the whole question is about uh when is the destruction of the temple going to take place so in matthew chapter 24 uh, Jesus answered, so all these things, false messiahs, earthquakes will happen, wars will break. These are, these are going to be like signs, all that stuff. And, uh, and when he's saying that, uh, he's prophesying about what is going to happen during the destruction of the temple. And uh, I mean, every biblical scholar will tell you that Jesus here is prophesying about the destruction of the temple. Now, in verse 30, it says, then will appear, when the temple is going to be destroyed, then will appear the sign of, sign of son of man in heaven, and then all the people of the earth will mourn. When they see son of man coming, again, I want you to understand the word, the word coming here, son of man coming here. Because many people, the whole problem is people don't understand the word son of man coming. Coming on the clouds of heaven. Okay, this phrase, coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with loud trumpet call and they will gather his elect, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, try to understand. Jesus is talking to his disciples who were Jews. And to these people, Jesus is giving them using words, okay, which are 
which only the Jews can understand because he's using a Jewish lingo. So when he says, when the son of man coming, what does it really mean? So remember, scripture explains scripture. So if you see, uh, let me take you to uh, share the screen again with you. And let me tell you, show you what does the word coming means. So again, let me take you to my PowerPoint. Here you go. Here. Mm -hmm. The son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. What does it mean? Now, if you check anywhere in the scripture, in the Old Testament, symbol for God's coming the, in cloud means God coming in judgment. Okay. Whenever there is a word used coming on the clouds uh, in the Old Testament, people know that this phrase means God is coming in judgment. In other words, Jesus is coming in judgment. So if you see some, some I, I don't have enough time, but just trust me, you can read it later on. Psalm 18 uh, verse 7 to 15, Psalm 104 verse 3, Isaiah 19 verse 1, Joel chapter 2 verse 1 to 2, Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 4 to 15. This phrase that God is coming on the cloud is there in all the scripture. And every time it speaks about God coming on the cloud, it means his coming in judgment to a particular nation, particular uh, historical people and nations. Okay. So in this context, what is Jesus trying to say? In this context, Jesus is trying to say that the temple is going to be destroyed. And uh, this is good. The temple is going to be destroyed because uh, it's the judgment of God that is going to be released. So the judgment of God is going to release on what? In a religious system. The Jewish religion system was all based on the temple. And so the judgment would fall on this temple. So if the temple is destroyed, the whole religious Jewish system breaks apart. And so in order for the kingdom of God to really be established and manifest, this temple had to be destroyed and God's judgment had to come over the religious system. So the question here, the, the, the thing is Jesus is saying, Jesus is saying, uh, the temple is going to be destroyed. I am going to come. The son of man is going to come in judgment and uh, judge this religious system. And uh, he's trying to tell about this end of this period. What period? The whole religious system period. That's what uh, Matthew chapter 24, if you read there, many people think Matthew chapter 24 is about what is going to happen at the end of the world. It's not end of the world, it's end of the age. What is going to happen, uh, how, how the world will end, the end times, all that stuff. Jesus is not prophesying the end times. Jesus is prophesying end of that particular age. Okay, so I put the put the basis uh, now. Now, let me uh, again share the screen. Okay. Now, Matthew chapter 24 has four parts. Uh, he, uh, he speaks four things. First is telling, Jesus is telling that you will be preaching uh, about the kingdom. There will be persecution, second thing. Uh, there will be power and then the last thing will be the coming of Jesus. Meaning, uh, he's, Jesus is telling, now remember, the temple was destroyed in AD 70. And, and uh, the so-called, what we call as coming of Jesus happened in AD 70 because the judgment over the religious system, the temple breaking happened. Uh, destroying happened in AD 70. It was destroyed by the Romans, but it was considered as the judgment of God. 
Now, before that, what was happening is Jesus was saying that uh, you will be preaching, there will be persecution, and that you will have power, and then you will also see the coming of uh, the Son of Man uh, in judgment against the temple system. So four things. Uh, if you see, that's what Jesus says. When you preach, uh, you will be persecuted. You will be taken to uh, government and kings. But don't worry, you will be given power what to say. And then Jesus will, uh, or the Son of Man will come on the cloud. Uh, basically, that phrase means coming in judgment, uh, destroying in AD 70 the whole temple system, the whole Jewish religious system. Because in order for the kingdom of God to really be established, okay, in the realm of the spirit, religious system had to be broken apart. Remember, uh, Adam fell from sin, he broke his relationship with God. And so then came the Jewish religion, which tried to uh, say that through this religious system, you can have that relationship with God. But it was not possible to have relationship with God through religion. So Jesus came to bring the kingdom of God, bring the restore back the relationship so in order for the restoration to happen fully, the religious system had to be broken. And that's what was being prophesied even in the Old Testament that a new covenant will take place. The, the old covenant will be broken. The old religious system will be broken. And Jesus will have a new covenant. And uh, the kingdom of God will come. Okay, kingdom of God will come. So remember... The kingdom of God is not something that is going to come in the future. The Bible clearly says the kingdom of God has already come. Okay. So in AD 70, the kingdom of God, which had come, became established because the old system broke away. So you can't put the old wine in the new wine skin. So the old system broke away through the destruction of the temple in AD 70. Now let's come back to Thessalonians. Thessalonians, what was happening? Let me explain to you a brief context of Thessalonians. So Paul writes a letter to the Thessalonians. So what was happening in the life of Thessalonians? Thessalonians, uh, they were worried, the people of Thessalonia, uh, the church in Thessalonian, Thessalonia, were worried because many of them were martyred. Many of them were martyred. Uh, before the temple could be destroyed, before they would see the Son of Man coming in AD 70, before they could see the judgment, uh, what happened was many were martyred. Why they were martyred? Because they were persecuted by Jews. If you check Acts chapter 17, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 15, you will come to know that they were they were persecuted by Jews and the Jews were you were were the main reason uh, why uh, they was uh, they were martyred, they were persecuted. So God uh, uh, so here uh, Saint Paul in uh, to the Thessalonians, he is trying to promise them, that God's wrath is going to fall upon those who are persecuting him. Basically, the Jewish system. God's wrath is going to come. God's judgment is going to come. The temple is going to be destroyed. And that is also going to reveal the coming of the Son of Man, coming of the Lord uh, in his kingdom. Okay, His kingdom is going to be established. So this is what the context of Thessalonians is. So... Now, everyone, the, the early Christian knew very well that the temple is going to be destroyed. And the, after the destruction of the temple, the kingdom of God is going to be established. Uh, kingdom of Jesus is going to be established. Jesus is going to reveal himself uh, through this uh, whole breaking of the kingdom. And so, uh, before that could happen, 
there were uh, there were Thessalonians who were martyred. They were dying, and they were worried uh, about them not able to see the coming of the Lord. And so Saint Paul is now writing a letter, consoling them, and trying to tell them, "Don't worry." The kingdom of God is going to be established. Jesus is going to show up. He is going to appear uh, spiritually and reveal himself through the destruction of the temple. And uh, uh, you don't have to worry. This people who are died and gone, they are going to be with him in that kingdom. And you too are also going to experience the kingdom. Did you get this? Okay, next now we, I'm going to explain to you uh, verse by verse what does it mean. So in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 uh, verse, look at this 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse verse um, uh, 16. Yeah, sorry. 1 Thessalonians uh, verse was 14. It says, For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe uh, all that. Uh, according to the Lord's verse 15, Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not proceed precede those who have fallen asleep. I'm going to explain verse by verse what it means. It says, According to the Lord's word, we we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. So, here, we who are alive, here, St. Paul is saying, people are martyred and gone, no doubt about it. Uh, people have been persecuted, many have died because of the persecution. Uh, but St. Paul is saying, when this uh, coming of the Lord happens, it's called a parousia, the appearing of the Lord. Parousia happens. When this coming of the Lord happens, coming of the Son of Man happens, uh, these people in the Spirit will be with the Lord, no doubt. And we will be entering the kingdom of God. These people in the spirit will be entering into that established kingdom of God or they're going to experience that established kingdom of God. And along with them, we also who are alive will experience that kingdom of God. So that's what he's saying. They are, we are not going to proceed. Okay, we are, It's not going to, uh, you know, we are not going to proceed. We are going to all together experience uh, that kingdom of God. So, uh, just I want to say, uh, look at that word which says, we who are alive. So, St. Paul is saying, we who are alive, meaning during that time, those who are alive, during that age, that period of time, they are going to experience the coming of the Lord. Not we, not you and me, not people who are 2,000 years. So the Lord would come in their lifetime. Point number one. Point number two. Look at Matthew chapter 24 verse 34. What it says, truly I tell you, this generation, not, not 2020, this generation, meaning during Paul's generation, will certainly not pass away or Jesus the generation during Jesus' time will certainly not pass away until all these things happened. Look at Matthew chapter 16, verse 28. It says, Truly I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. So you see, uh, there it's clearly mentioned, Jesus is saying that that generation the generation during Jesus' time is not going to uh, is is going to experience the coming of the Son of Man. Is going to experience the destruction of the temple at 70 A.D. He's also saying some people who are there with him are not going to die. They are going to they are going to witness uh, this uh, second com uh, the, not second this coming of the Son of Man, which is going to take place. So. He is not talking about we who are alive. Paul is not talking about not those who will be alive in 2000 years ago, but he's talking about that generation when he was alive. 
okay next verse you see um, by no means precede those who are asleep basically uh, if you read uh, hebrew chapter 11 verse 13 we come to know that uh, the the all those who were dead and gone all the uh, old testament prophet who are dead and gone they have were given a promise and their promise was if you read see verse 16 it says instead they were longing for a better country a heavenly one in other words they were longing for a kingdom therefore god is not ashamed to be called their god for he has prepared a city for them so god prepared a kingdom for them a city for them and this city is not the old jerusalem this city is the new jerusalem and if you read read hebrews chapter 12 uh, it speaks about the new jerusalem that that is a spiritual jerusalem so jesus did not come to establish a, a earthly kingdom he came to establish a spiritual kingdom and all this old testament prophets and men of god they were they died with a promise to enter the kingdom of god now this entering of the kingdom of god would happen only when the son of man came in 70 ad and there was a destruction of temple there was a judgment that was released there was a destruction of temple the old jewish system got collapsed and the new uh, kingdom of god the new city uh, was established so that it says by no means precede those who are asleep that means those people who are dead and gone people who have been mar martyred during uh, the time of thessalonians and we who are alive we are going to be together witnessing and experiencing uh, the kingdom being established the the parousia where jesus is going to appear the son of man is going to appear in his kingdom victoriously okay so that that is what it means now let's look at the next one for the lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of god and the dead in christ will rise first so remember this this language now paul is using is exactly the same language which is used in matthew chapter 24 matthew chapter 24 verse 31 uh, look at this what it says and he will send his angels with loud trumpet call and they will gather his elect from the four corners from one end to the heavens to the other okay so it's a remember when when god is talking about a loud voice a trumpet it's a prophetic language we are not supposed to take 1 thessalonians chapter 4 verse uh, chapter 4 verse 13 to 18 as literally because it's a prophetic language and this language is only was understood by the christian during that time because it was an old testament language it's a prophetic language look at isaiah chapter 30 verse 30 uh, uh, and 31 the Lord, now this is uh, how God came in judgment over this place called as Assyria. And look at the language. The Lord will cause people to hear his majestic voice, see voice, and will make them see his arm coming down with raging anger and consuming fire with cloud burst, thunderstorm and hail. The voice of the Lord will shatter Assyria with his rod, he will strike them down. And if you check Isaiah chapter 37, this prophecy of Isaiah, which, have, which was prophesied in chapter 30, got fulfilled in Isaiah chapter 37. Now, uh, when that got fulfilled, it never got fulfilled in this manner. It, they never heard a huge voice. They never saw an arm coming out. Uh, they never saw hailstorm or consuming fire coming down. So this is kind of a poetic, prophetic language that was used to just explain that Assyria is going to be destroyed by God. But literally, did they hear the voice? No. Literally, did they saw the arm coming down? No. Literally, they saw the cloud burst, thunderstorm, hail? No. 
that was not seen because this is a prophetic language. Uh, similarly, when Thessalonians is talking about archangel's voice, trumpet call, all this loud voice from heaven, that doesn't mean that really there's going to be a loud voice, there's going to be a trumpet call, there's going to be all that stuff. It just means a prophetic language where there is going to be a judgment that is going to come over the Jewish nation and the Jewish religious system and they are going to be shattered. That is what it clearly means. And the people in Thessalonians understood this. The early church understood this. That's why they never believed in rapture. Rapture is a doctrine just came 500 years ago. Okay. Next, we got to look at the trumpet. Uh, the word trumpet is there. That there will be a trumpet blast. Okay. So if you look at uh, book of Revelation, it speaks about seven trumpets. And each time there is a trumpet blast. Now, does that mean a literal, that uh, there is also in the book of Revelation, bowls of wrath being poured out? But were there really bowls which was thrown, pour, of wrath which was poured out? No, it was not literal language. It is a metaphorical language. In a similar way, when Revelation is talking about seven trumpet, it does not mean really there will be a trumpet played or sound of a trumpet. So if you see, uh, again, it's a prophetic language. Uh, it does not supposed to be literal. So the people who believe in rapture, they believe there's going to be a trumpet which will be sound and people are going to hear the trumpet and they are going to be just taken in the cloud. So look at Revelation 11 verse 15. The seventh angel sounded his trumpet this is the last trumpet and there were loud voices in heaven which said the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our lord and he of his messiah and he will reign forever and ever my question to you when did the kingdom of the world become the kingdom of messiah simple answer the kingdom of god is already come remember that and it has become the kingdom of messiah 70 ad it already happened. The kingdom of God world has already become the kingdom of the Messiah in 70 AD. It's not going to happen in future. It has already happened. It has already happened. The kingdom of God has already come. It is already established in 70 AD. And he will reign forever and ever. So do you believe Jesus is reigning now? Yes. If he is reigning now, you also have to believe that the seven trumpet blast happened in 70 AD and it's not going to happen in the future. How do we know that? Revelation chapter 11 verse 8. Just read that and you see their bodies will lie in public square of the great city, which is figuratively called Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. So which city Lord was crucified? Jerusalem. So, it says, at that very hour, there was a severe earthquake and the tenth of the city collapsed. When was the city collapsed? It was collapsed. Which was the city that got collapsed? Uh, it is Jerusalem that, uh, that got collapsed. So when was this go city got collapsed? It was collapsed when the Romans came and destroyed the city in 70 AD. Try to understand. So this is not a future event. It has already happened in the past. Next one. Uh, we see this word, uh, this uh, phrase, after that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together. Okay, now this is very important. So it says, uh, the dead in Christ will rise first. When, we, when it says the dead in Christ will rise, doesn't mean there will be a bodily resurrection. It means uh, those who are dead in Christ will be transis transited into uh, the kingdom of God. So they will be experiencing the kingdom of God. The religious uh, system will be broken. And then we also, they who are alive, okay? Remember after that, we who are alive, when he's talking about we, it's not about us. He's talking about, Paul is talking about his lifetime, his generation. Alive and are left will be caught up together. Now this word caught up. I want you to uh, look at this word caught up. And uh, the word caught up here in Greek, they say, uh, hap, hapatso. Hapatso 
okay and from there they took this word in latin called as rapture so i want you to understand this word caught up first and foremost in the original greek so the belief when when you read this caught up many people think that people on the earth will be floating up and caught up in the sky in heaven so first and foremost in original greek when this word was written that word up was not there it was just caught hapazo uh, this word hapazo appears 13 times in the new testament and what does it mean it means by taken by force remember uh, jesus says the kingdom has to be taken by force so appears 13 times and it take it means taken by force or it means take away or taken away taken away but it never indicates a direction it never says you will be caught up up or down or side or somewhere like that no it just means you'll be you'll be taken into the kingdom you'll be taken away into that established kingdom of christ okay so that explains the word caught up hapazo doesn't mean you'll be raptured floating in the air in the sky in the cloud okay next uh caught up together with them in the clouds okay so when you hear the word clouds what does it mean okay when you hear the uh, the word clouds what does it mean so if you go to hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 therefore since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses so the word cloud means together with them in the cloud means we will be all the dead and also those who are alive are going to experience the uh, the freshness or the new kingdom or the new kingdom that christ Uh, will be established in in 70 AD by destroying the old religious system this is what it means it does not mean literal clouds remember it does not mean a literal voice of archangel does not mean literal trumpets and it also does not mean literal clouds please try to understand uh and scripture explains scripture so hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 speaks about this great cloud of witness means we will be caught up with all the saints all the uh, men and women of god meaning right now we are all in that kingdom okay all who believe in jesus whether they are dead whether they are alive we are caught we are caught in the kingdom of god okay next one to meet the lord it says to meet the lord so many people think that we will be meeting the lord uh in the in the in the sky okay is not like that so what does the word meet mean in greek the word meet here means apanthesis apanthesis does not mean go out and meet it means uh, you know it means a dignitary is coming and you are basically going to that dignitary and escorting a dignitary is imagine a, a very uh, well known person is coming to meet you at your house oh, so what you do you go out of your house and uh, escort that dignitary into your house so that is what apanthesis really mean in the entire scripture escorting him to the destination and not actually does not mean that you go with him to heaven so when jesus is coming in 70 ad what basically we are doing is he's saying saint paul is saying you are going out there uh, and welcoming that jesus into uh, into the kingdom in uh, welcoming jesus into on unto the earth because the kingdom of god has to be established unto the earth okay so that is what it means we are escorting jesus we are escorting that kingdom that's why jesus said when you pray pray like this thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven so this is what it means we are uh, escorting jesus uh, the dignitary unto the earth into the earth so that's what it means to meet the lord okay so bring that kingdom unto the earth and the last i think uh, this is the last in the air in the air 
so many people think okay we will be caught up in, and meet jesus in the air floating up in the cloud no it does not mean that again i'm saying this is a very figurative language so when it is talking about cloud when it is talking about trumpet it is not literally talking about cloud and trumpet it's a very figurative language so when it is talking about air it does not mean air that we breathe or the air that is in the atmosphere it means christ is coming in victory over all evil forces because air signified a realm where the evil forces were ruling so because the air speaks about the realm or the kingdom which was ruled by evil but now conquered by christ and ruled by christ and us okay so if you look simple example ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 it says as for you you were dead in your transgression and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air it is not talking about a physical air it is talking about the spiritual realm the spiritual uh, dimension or realm so this that that is what it talks about so uh, this is what uh, basically uh, is what you know 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 15 uh, 13 to 18 is all about which we have misunderstood and we have said so that this signifies as event an event where everyone will be abducted up in the cloud and i don't know for how long we will be there for more than 7 years we will be on top in the cloud uh, and jesus will take us to heaven and then from the cloud we're going to come back on earth all not scriptural not biblical not endorsed by the early christians and early church fathers this is a new thing this came 500 years called as rapture which is really really not biblical but this is my explanation to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 to 18 i hope you like it uh, if you have questions uh, do put it in the comment section below uh, i will try to answer them with my next video i don't want to make this video too long bless you uh, and be victorious in jesus name